Now, yeah, Terry. Talk to you. We're going to skip the negativity. It's the yeah. off season. It's negative enough. We're going to jump straight into the chat. As a big New South Wales Blues fan, myself and you, obviously not. Madge, Cartwright, Daly. These are the names we've got coming up saying, hey, I want to coach the Blues. And as a Blues fan, I'm thinking, is this the best we got? Well, let's start with Madge. It's a huge conflict of interest because he's the current New Zealand coach. Mm -hmm. So if he does get the job, I think he's going to be a step down now. He'll have to step down from New Zealand. Now, for a three-game series, I actually don't I don't hate the shout of Michael Maguire. I think for three weeks in origin, he is exactly the profile of person that you want. Someone who's going to be hard-nosed, take no crap, make you train hard, make you train harder, make you play really hard, believe in the passion of that jersey that you're putting on, and then at the end of the thing, you just dust your hands off and go away. The profile of coach, though, for Michael McGuire, he's got no results to his name recently. Like, he hasn't even done a good job with New Zealand. Like, the fact that New Zealand didn't make the World Cup final, he hasn't done a good job with them, and his record at the Tigers just went backwards, okay? Finished ninth, got a wooden spoon, got sacked from a bloke who interviewed himself. Just leave it as it is. Can't write. <laughs> when, when I read that, I was like, you know what? He'd be better off with me and you coaching the Blues. And you love the Blues and I hate them, right? So you'd you'd be much better off with with them. Laurie Daly, I don't know. Did he do any good for the Blues? I don't think he did. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know. Like I want to give my I want to give my two cents on what I think, but again, it, it really doesn't make a lick of difference what I say because. I wear the opposite jersey to, to who's putting the hand up for it. So, yeah, but but that that's what we want. We want when Brad Fittler stepped down, Queensland fans went oh, and mm-hmm. New South Wales fans said yay. That says everything went wrong over the past couple of seasons. And yeah, I know. Was, the the, the minute that happened, I tweeted the mate. Israel Folau picture of himself crying. Yeah, it, it's like people go, "Oh, he's got a fifty percent win rate." Okay, that is good in Origin. I get it. But when you look at the sides that he lost to, and look, I don't mean to make fun, but they had like their fifth string fullback. They had Cam Munster, who I I say with seriousness, slept about three hours that week after partying after the Storm Grand Final 2020. Frank Cohen, Edric Lee can't even play first grade, and they got picked for origin. Corey Allen was their fullback. So, like, again, with the greatest respect, these guys are, you know, fantastic footballers in their own right, but they're not what New South Wales had time after time. So, yeah, I, I'm on record as not being a particularly big fan of Brad Fittler. So I'm happy he's gone. Look, Madge, I, I love the shout in the three weeks. You know, it's it's what, a nine-week nine, nine week job, a ten-week job. They just need someone who can just point them in the right direction, lay a simple plan out, and pick the best players available. I still – I'll scream bloody murder that it's Jeff Tuvey. If you're not, go get Jason Taylor. This is a guy who seems to have – the Bears running, and I know he's got an assistant role, and I know he didn't do particularly well, South or the Tigers or whoever he was there. That's another player who just seems to seems to get things right short term. You've only got to win two games. Like I, I can't right no Madge. If you ha- if I had to choose out of three, yes, I don't want Laurie Daly anywhere near the side. I don't want Greg Alexander anywhere near the side. All these talks of the Johns boys, yeah, Matty Johns, not Andrew. Danny Badiris, Boyd Cordner. These are blokes I want in there, but not coaching. Boyd Cordner. Is, you know, my, 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 my initial shout was if you're thinking of someone recently, right? Because you have a look at if you have a look at Queensland with Billy Slater, he's he's gone in there for the recency of what he has done, right? So if you're going for the recency of someone who would give everything for New South Wales, it's it's Paul Gallon, right? This is a guy who used to fake an injury for Cronulla. So he, but a week later he'd be all right to go and run 200 meters in 80 prop. minutes of prop mm-hmm. for Cronulla. But I don't one I don't think he'd be very well welcomed by the Blues fans and two I I don't I actually don't think he'd be a good coach, right? But he is the type of person like if you're appointing a coach you've got to turn around to this guy and go by the way Paul Gallon's going to be there every single day. 
from sunrise to sunset, he is going to be there and he's probably going to do 80% of the talking at training to get these guys fired up and he's, he's going to bash someone. I don't care who it is, he's going to bash someone every day, whether it's the same person or someone different. He's going to flog the living daylights out of this team until they understand what it means to play for New South Wales. Now, people will laugh at that and go, oh, Gallon was the captain of, you know, the worst New South Wales teams and the the team that lost eight in a row. Yeah, it's a freaks of Queensland, right? You're never going to see that again. Four generational players born in one generation in the same state within 20 Ks of each other. It's unheard of. Um, yeah, and, and Greg Inglis born in Newcastle. Um, so, I mean, this is like that. That's what you had to deal with there. Like you, you drop uh prime Paul Gallon into this current New South Wales team and you you're gonna see him in a completely different light. I'd love you for New South Wales, gotta get someone like Greg Bird in there with him as well. Right. But I don't know who the right person is and I can't say it because I've got no passion for New South Wales. But of all the names that have come forward at the moment, probably just very high Brad Fittler. Yeah it, it's not it's not a good spot. If if you're going to Put say I think Boyd Corner's the, the shout. I mean, I know he, I know he's only thirty two or something. He's, he's currently on SAS and he's killing it by all accounts. He was talking footy and he was tearing up. And this guy, this guy would die. He, he almost died on the field numerous times. And I, I say that lightheartedly, but it's true. This guy risked his life going out there for the Roosters in New South Wales and Australia. You put him as the figurehead. You put Madge and you put Laurie Daly as his assistant. I think you got a similar situation what you have with Melbourne Ingo. Because you can't tell me he was pulling the reins for all those years, but he was the one that was figurehead. There no, no, like, my, yeah, Michael Hagen is the one who they give the unofficial credit to. Spot on. But you you tell, if you go, okay, Madge says, or you run through a wall, or Boyd Cordner says run through a wall, I guarantee you to a man, they run harder for Boyd Cordner. So I, I don't have an answer yet other than Jeff Tui, but that, he hasn't even been mentioned. So I don't know whether they've asked him and he's told him to, you know, take a hike. Or whether they just don't raid him, but I thank God Brad Phillips gone.